Number 16. A 14 gauge copper wire has a diameter of 1.628 millimeters. What magnitude of current flows when the drift velocity is one millimeter per second? All right, so in, you know, we're gonna reference this problem, I guess, and we've seen this now two other times, so I'm gonna run through this. So the first thing is we have to find current and we know the drift velocity. We need a formula then that relates the two, and that formula is that the current will equal the electron density of the wire multiplied by the charge value of the moving electron, multiplied then by the cross-sectional area, then multiplied by the drift velocity. So in order to find I, I need to know these four things. So the first thing is the electron density. How do we find it? Well, one way you can do it is by doing a whole dimensional analysis. Another way you can do it is by using a nice little formula I made for you over here on the left-hand side. So basically what this is, and I explained in number 14, so check it out. I'm going to run through it here. This represents the electric charge, okay, of the atom that you're talking about. So here we're talking about copper, right? And it says it has one free electron, okay, per copper atom. And therefore, this would be, the electric charge would have been negative one of that free electron. However, it's the absolute value, so, you know, just make it one. Then, if they don't tell us any mass, we're going to assume we're using the molar mass, so 63.54. And that's grams per mole that you have to look up on the table. If we know we're dealing with the molar mass, or we have this mass then, uh, which is in grams, by the way, and that's why I have the 1,000 in this formula to do the conversion for you right away. Um, if you have uh, a, a mass of 63.54 grams, then we know, and that's per mole, remember, then the question is how many atoms are there? Well, it's just how many atoms there are in a mole. 6.02, which is just Avogadro's number, times 10 to the 23rd. Okay? The density then of the copper they gave it to us, it's 8.8 .8 times 10 to the third, and voila. All you have to do now is plug that all into the calculator to find the electron density. The units here of that will get spit out essentially of this formula is electrons, number of electrons that is per cubic meter, hence electron density. So 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd multiplied by 8.8 .8 times 10 to the third multiplied by then 1,000. And I realize I typed that times 10 to the ninth. Why did I put that? Okay, 8.8 .8 times 10 to the third, multiplied by 1,000, divided then by 63.54. And we get a value here of about, so I'm gonna write it now on into my formula. So the end value here is going to be 8.84, no, 8.34. I'm just trying to see if you guys are paying attention with this one. Um, 28, okay, times 10 to the 28, then multiplied by the charge of that free electron. So we know that has a charge value of negative 1.6 times 10 to the minus 19th. Okay. Uh, the cross-sectional area. So they said now the diameter of the wire is going to be uh, 1.628 millimeters. So here's your cross-section. The diameter is going to be 1.628 millimeters. What's then the radius? Well, you'd say it's just half of that, right? And I'd say, yes, that indeed is. So it's 1.628 divided by 2. So it's 8 point, basically 0 0.814. Okay, that's now the radius. So let me just bring that out. This is now the radius. Okay. So now if you know the radius, how do you find the area? Well, you have to remember that the area is simply equal to pi r squared. Right? So here's the... Now remember, remember, remember... This is in millimeters. Okay, both of these are in millimeters here. So you have to convert that into meters. We've seen these conversions 1,500 times now, right? So just essentially multiply that by 10 to the minus 3. And that's then it in meters, okay? So pi then multiplied by 0.814 times 10 to the minus 3 and square that. So the cross-sectional area then is going to be 2.08 times 10 to the minus sixth. Okay, and that's in then uh, squared meters. And now the drift velocity, oh wonderful, they give it to us in millimeters per second. But what do you think we need that in? We need that in meters per second. So since I basically have to convert from millimeters into meters, I know I'm just going to simply take the 1.00 and multiply it by 10 to the minus three. And that would be then the unit in meters per second. And that's it. See over time, you want to try to think of shortcuts in terms of your conversions because the problems become a little tougher and we 
need to spend more time probably thinking about the problem rather than thinking about how to do the conversions. Um, so over time, you definitely want to try to increase your speed on that. In any case, let's multiply it. Enough of the lecture. Let's multiply it. Negative 1.6 times 10 to the 19th. Uh, multiplied by, I already plugged in the first value of 8.34 as I was talking. So 2.08 times 10 to the minus 6. And sometimes when I do two things at once, like I'm doing now, um, I might mess things up. Hopefully I didn't. But the answer looks a little... Hmm. The answer looks a little strange here. A little strange. <laughs> I got 2.77 times 10 to the 39th. Um, hmm. Is that the right current? Um, probably not. So, I'm not going to say anything for the next 20 seconds. I'm going to just calculate. I'm using exact values, by the way. Looks a little better. Okay. So here I get about 27.8 amps. Okay. Uh, let me just make sure. Yeah, I guess that's that. Cool. All right, guys. Thank you so much for tuning in. Appreciate it. Please remember to help us out and subscribe, and I will see you soon. Take care.